You ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Debbie Hall. I'm the Executive Director of the Martinsville Henry County Historical Society. And we'd like to welcome you all today. You're in for a treat. Uh, Tom Perry is presenting a program on Theodore Roosevelt and Booker T. Washington. So he can go ahead and get started without any further ado. Tom. Turn on the camera. Yep. Good afternoon. It's good to see everybody on such a glorious day. Why are we here? Because <laughs> we love history. <laughs> I'm here because Debbie Hall feeds me after every one of these events, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> in, in Virginia, I'm not going to tell you what Mervyn said. Everybody else heard him, but I, I'm not going to tell you, so <laughs> you'll have to get somebody else to tell you. Uh, anyway, this was our, uh, our Black History Month program. The, the weather uh, messed us up, so we moved it to April. Uh, so that's why we're talking about Booker T. Washington and Theodore Roosevelt first weekend in April. We were going to do it on uh, Black History Month, but uh, the weather kind of interfered with that. And uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have a question, and afterwards if you have questions. Uh, this is something that I don't pretend to be an expert on, but I'm kind of fascinated by Booker T. Washington. He's kind of a local guy, so I, I am kind of fascinated by him and some of the things he went through in his life. And. Uh, that's uh, what we're about today. It's, this talk is kind of a parallel lives sort of program where I talk about Theodore Roosevelt and Booker Washington. And uh, it's amazing how many things they both have in common in their two lives. And of course, they, they knew each other very well. In October 1901, the Memphis newspaper, and I quote, said this about President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. The most damnable outrage which has ever been perpetuated by any citizen of the United States was committed yesterday by the President of the United States. He is not, <clears throat> he is not only inflamed the anger of the Southern people, he has excited their disgust. <laughs> what in the world had Theodore Roosevelt done to cause such an outburst? He invited a white man to dinner in 1901. He invited Booker T. Washington to the White House for dinner. No one had ever done that before, and it caused a scandal like you cannot imagine. Uh, I don't know if it's quite like a Malaysian airplane getting lost in the ocean, but it uh, would have been on constantly on the news, I expect, for days and days and days. Uh, these two men, uh, shown here as young men, were born two years apart, uh, Booker Washington in 1856, they think, Theodore Roosevelt in uh, 1858. One man, of course, is freed by Abraham Lincoln's actions uh, and as president. And Theodore Roosevelt actually saw Abraham Lincoln's funeral cortege coming through New York City when he was a little boy. There's a famous photo of him looking out the window of his father's uh, apartment. You can see him and his brother watching Lincoln go by. Both of these men uh, lost their first wives very young. They had one daughter with each of these women. Theodore uh, had a wife named Alice and had a daughter named Alice. Uh, Booker Washington's first wife, Fanny, he had a daughter named Portia. Booker Washington is going to marry three times in his life and Theodore Roosevelt will marry twice. Of course, Booker Washington is going to move from Franklin County to West Virginia. He'll go down to Hampton to school. Uh, he'll spend a little time in Washington, D.C., among other places. And of course, he's going to end up at Tuskegee in Alabama, where he's going to make quite a name for himself. He's going to write five books. The most famous, of course, is Up From Slavery. Theodore Roosevelt is going to go a little different uh, track in life. Many of you probably read a book about him. Uh, very interesting fellow. He goes from state assemblyman, loses his first wife. He becomes a cowboy out in the Dakotas. He, is, he wrote so many books, I can't even remember. Uh, his best book is probably The Naval War of 1812. He became the Civil Service Commissioner in the Harrison administration. 
again, New York City Police Commissioner. So if any of you ever, any of you ever watch uh, Blue Bloods with Tom Selleck on Friday nights? Anybody ever see that? You ever notice he's got uh, Theodore Roosevelt's picture hanging in his office because he and Theodore Roosevelt had the same job, New York City Police Commissioner. I'm glad to see I'm not the only human being who noticed that. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt uh, served as Assistant Secretary of the Navy. His cousin Franklin will also hold that same job. Theodore Roosevelt, I think you can give him a great bit of credit for getting the war of Spanish American War of 1898 started from that position as Secretary, Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Of course, Theodore Roosevelt becomes the Rough Rider in that war, becomes famous. He's going to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. 2001, a little late, but never late to never, I guess. He will become governor of New York and vice president of the United States. He will become the youngest man to ever hold that office on September the 14th, 1901, when William McKinley is assassinated. He is, of course, known for being one of our first conservationists as an environmental guy. He was a trust buster, uh, Panama Canal, and he got the Nobel Peace Prize for his actions in the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, pretty good resume, I'd say. Pretty good resume. How many Nobel Prize winners and Congressional Medal of Honor recipients you ever heard of in life? Booker Washington's going to go a little different path. He's going to build a school there at Tuskegee. In 1895, he's going to become famous for his uh, Atlanta Exposition speech. Uh, he, of course, is pushing industrial education. He's going to do something that I think is kind of brave for a man in Alabama. Uh, he will you know, speak out against lynching. Uh, it's easy if you're, I guess, in New York City to speak out against lynching, but when you're in Tuskegee, Alabama, that's a little different thing. That's a little different thing. He, of course, is not going to move, want to move fast enough, and they're still arguing about this with Booker Washington today, but he became, I think, after Frederick Douglass dies, the spokesman, for his race, if you can be the spokesman for your race. I love the way they, they label that, but you know, Booker Washington was probably the most prominent African American in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He worked behind the scenes. He doesn't get the credit I think he deserves in a lot of times, but uh, he in his own way is a very brave fellow too. These are the daughters from those first, first marriages. On the left is Portia. She's going to go to Wellesley. Uh, she's going to be the uh, attention of many magazine articles. I guess she'd be on the cover of People if there had been a People magazine back then. Booker Washington raised his children very strictly. He said that he, he wanted to raise his children like chickens. <laughs> he said if they get their living without having to work for it, they won't develop. Theodore Roosevelt, a man who was on Mount Rushmore, considered one of our greatest presidents, said this of his daughter Alice. He said he could run the country or he could control Alice. He could not do both. <laughs> Alice here on the right, she said of her father, Debbie Hall loves this quote, that he wanted to be uh, the baby at every christening, the bride at every wedding, and the corpse at every funeral. <laughs> <laughs> this is Theodore Roosevelt and his second wife, Edith, with all of their children. Uh, David Minter, whose father was at uh, D-Day, Omaha Beach. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt's son, Theodore Jr., right over his uh, left shoulder there, of course, went in on D-Day and uh, died of a heart attack. Just uh, few weeks later after going in and I was just thinking about that day. Uh, and of course Alice there in the middle uh, in the back. I think uh, Theodore's youngest son, I think Quentin is the one who's leaning on his shoulder. I think that's Quentin will uh, lose his life in World War I. And I think, it, uh, I think that was the last straw for his father in many ways. Booker Washington's family. You can see Portia there, I believe, on the front right, and I believe this is his third wife. But uh, just to show you these two men living about the same time, growing their families.
I think this is a picture made at Tuskegee Institute. It could have been made uh, in any number of places. It's hard to uh, find, but the point being, there they are together. Theodore Roosevelt sought out Booker Washington's advice on many issues, on appointments in the South to federal jobs. They had frequent correspondence between each other and frequent meetings with each other. Theodore Roosevelt, of course, is president for nearly the entire term of, of William McKinley from 1901 to 1909. He always thought his greatest mistake was not running uh, for a third term and uh, tried to get back there. You know, I think he was going to run probably in 1920 as well. October the 16th, 1901, Booker Washington came to the White House to have dinner with the President of the United States. He was there from around 7.30 until 10 o'clock. Theodore Roosevelt was the first president really to invite people, well, he likes to say, do, di do business over dinner. Uh, it was also the first day that his youngest sons, uh, Quentin and Archie, had arrived at the White House to live. McKinley had not been dead very long at all. Edith, uh, his wife, was there. Edith, his daughter, excuse me, Edith, his daughter and his wife, but Alice is not there because, like he said, he could not control Alice. He had his old friend there, Philip Stewart, who was from Colorado, who hunted with him a lot. And uh, as Theodore Roosevelt probably sucked down his coffee, the man is like I am with Sonic Sweet Tea. He just loved to drink coffee. And of course, Maxwell House can thank him for a good to the last drop because he loved his Maxwell House coffee. Uh, and Theodore Roosevelt later admitted that when he first had invited Booker Washington to have dinner with him, he paused a moment and thought about it. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea, but he said later he was kind of ashamed of himself because he'd even thought such a thing. Well, here's what some of the Southern newspapers thought about it. Theodore Roosevelt, had no right to express his personal attitudes about race in the White House as the evening dining room belonged to the nation. The mixing of races uh, with Booker and his sons with the quote, virginal Alice. If you eat with them, you may end up marrying them. Northern reaction to this was a little bit different. One newspaper said, the South should be rejoiced. Two of the truest Americans born on our soil and two of the best and most intelligent and influential friends of the Southern people now living at dinner together. This caused such a controversy. This is a, a drawing of the two of them there together. Of course, as I told you, there was a whole crowd of people there having dinner. Uh, Booker Washington, you've probably never seen anything quite like this before. The Roosevelt children were allowed to just run wild. It, it was nothing, it was not unusual for snakes and animals and who knows what all to be brought to the dinner table. As you've read anything about Theodore Roosevelt, you know he was just as bad as his children. Poor Edith probably had quite a time because her husband was every bit as bad as her children were when it came to this sort of thing. <clears throat> there were cartoons such as this on the left about this event. This is I love this guy. He is, he is, talk about somebody you can just love, love to hate. This is South Carolina Senator Ben Pitchfork, Ben Tillman. And I will edit his comments about this for obvious reasons, but you will see this is what he said. The action of President Roosevelt, Roosevelt in entertaining that blank will necessitate our killing a thousand blank in the South before they will learn their place again. This is a United States Senator from South Carolina. Theodore, later, Theodore Roosevelt later banned him from the White House because of this and, and, and other things that, that he did. And, and I read that to you so you, you understand uh, it's a different time. And, and this really caused a controversy of enormous proportion. It also did something else. This is uh, Scott Joplin. I'm sure we all, we're all old enough to see the sting, right? So, Scott Joplin uh, wrote an opera about Booker coming to the White House. 
It was called a guest of honor, and it's lost to history. Uh, for some reason, uh, he lost it. He was uh, out on the road and lost his money, and his possessions were confiscated, and this opera has pretty much disappeared. If you find a copy of it on eBay, you might want to buy it, because I have a feeling you could sell it for a pretty good piece of change. Now, ragtime is the music of the time. You know, this is what the kids are listening to. This is what Alice and Portia, no doubt, are listening to. And uh, it reminds me of a generational thing. Uh, you remember when the Beatles first came over here 50 years ago? Oh, it was just the most awful thing in the world. Well, Scott Joplin probably was the most awful thing in the world to the parents, all this ragtime music. <laughs> As time goes on, this controversy won't die. It, it continues to the point that the Republicans, uh, fearing election uh, results will be affected and all sorts of things, start distancing themselves from the fact that Washington has dinner with the president. They start referring to it as a working lunch, and none of the uh, none of the family were present. It was just the president and Booker Washington. It was. Uh, Interesting, this thing wouldn't die. Booker Washington told a story one time that he's in a train station and this southern gentleman walks up to him and this is what he says to him. Sir, I'm glad to meet you. I always wanted to shake your hand, sir. I think, sure, you are the greatest man in America. Booker Washington uh, thanked him and suggested that's very nice, but I'm certainly not the greatest man in America, the, the President of the United States was the greatest man in America. No, sir, not by a jugful. I used to think so, but since he invited you to dinner, I think he's a scoundrel. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt left office in 1909 and uh, was succeeded by William Howard Taft. Uh, who's going to, uh, I think, turn the Republican Party in a little more conservative bent than Theodore Roosevelt would appreciate. And of course, they're going to have a big falling out. Uh, Roosevelt will then try to run as an independent of Bull Moose against Taft and Woodrow Wilson, which will give Woodrow Wilson the presidency. Booker Washington is going to uh, then and now uh, be still involved with this uh, war of ideals between uh, W.B. Du Bois and himself over the way that African Americans should be educated, the way civil rights should be handled, and uh, there's still books written about this to this day. Uh, du Bois, of course, lived, I guess, lived up until, what, 1963 when the March on Washington occurred. He was still alive uh, in 1963. But these two men uh, continued to uh, be, uh, you know, the voice of African Americans for a generation, and uh, they just had a little bit different worldview, I think. Booker Washington is going to uh, live on uh, at his home there in uh, Tuskegee. Of course, he's famous for having the Tuskegee Airmen in. This is his house, the Oaks, which uh, I'm not sure if it's still a National Park property. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it belongs to Tuskegee. I'm not sure right now. Of course, uh, this is Washington's grave there at Tuskegee. He's buried right beside George Washington Carver, who uh, did everything known to man with the peanut. Teddy Roosevelt, of course, will end up on Mount Rushmore. Uh, his home, Sagamore Hill, is open out there on Long Island, and he'll die in 1919, right after his son, died in World War I and buried there in a very uh, simple, really, cemetery and gravestone that you can see. Of course, then there's the teddy bear. Which <laughs> so this is just my thoughts on two men sitting down to dinner. Now, you would think that's not really a big deal to sit down to dinner with somebody, but then again, maybe sitting down to have lunch somewhere is a big deal. This is uh, the Greensboro City. And I wasn't even born when that happened. <laughs>